Welcome to LifeLink Church. My name is Sasha, and we are so glad that you're watching today. Before we jump into today's message, we want to invite you to join us in person Sundays at 9 and 11. We'd love to connect with you at one of our Sunday services. Now, grab something to take notes with, and let's get ready to dive in and hear something from God today. What's up, church family? How y'all doing? I love it. I love it. Man, it is such a privilege. It's such an honor to be up here today with y'all. Thank you so much. Pastor Chris. Can we go for Pastor Chris, everybody? That's what I'm talking about. Man, we are so blessed to be at this church, yes or no? Lifeling makes a difference in the valley, and you make a difference in the valley. And so God has a challenge for us today. God's going to give us a word today. God's going to be in the middle of us today, and he's going to speak his truth over us. And so I encourage you, open up your hearts, open up your minds, open up your ears, and tune into what God is saying. So I just want to shout out again our amazing pastors, Pastor Dave, Pastor Cherie. Um, I love that Pastor Dave got an opportunity to, to uh, encourage the valley with something that God put on his heart and challenged us with as a church. So praise God for that. But also just shout out Pastor Cherie in her heart for what she was sharing a moment ago. Let's really be intentional, y'all. Let's honor what she was saying. Let's be out there and let's learn how we can be a light in our communities this October 31st. It's gonna be amazing. So um, if you didn't hear or if I didn't say, I can't remember, but I'm Josh Russell. Hello, everybody. I serve as a staff pastor here at LifeLink Church, and uh, it's such an honor. Um, One of my main focuses is with student ministry. Shout out to student movement in the house. I hear you over there, hello. Um, and so I just love what, um, what I'm, we, me and my wife are called to do. And so my wife, Pastor Tip, is on the row over there. And so we're excited. So we've been in this series called Counterculture. We've been in a series called Counterculture. Many of you know that culture today, there's a lot of conversations. There's a lot of themes that are happening in our culture that are really um, impacting the conversation and impacting um, our nation. But here's the great thing. God is not aloof. God is not confused about any of it. In fact, he has a lot to say about what's going on in our culture. He has a lot to say to us as uh, believers, as Christ followers. And so we want to know what God's word says, and we want to know what he's talking to us about. So I want to encourage us today, let's not get caught up in the conversations, but let's get caught up in God's presence. Let's get caught up in his word, and let's dial in and listen to what he is saying to us, what he's encouraging us, because he always leads us into truth. Turn to someone and say, he's truth. Okay, he always leads us into truth, and he's always going to bring guidance to our life. And we need his truth because his truth leads us to freedom. His truth leads us to closeness with God. And we need more God in our life. And we need more God in our culture. Yes or no, church family? All right. Well, with that being said, let's go ahead and pray. And then we'll get into what we're talking about tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you are God who is so unbelievably powerful, who is so unbelievably alive in our culture. Sometimes it's hard to see through all the darkness, but your light is in the middle of it all. Thank you, Lord, that your church is strong, that your people are strong. And so today, remind us of who we are, remind us of what we are supposed to do, remind us and encourage us that we are called to make a difference, that we are called to be here in the house, but we are also called to make a difference in our community. So we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you that the truth of your word will impact our soul, would pierce our soul, would cut out what does not belong, and instead build up the things of God that will change our life forever. We thank you that you are moving. We thank you that no matter if there is any distractions in our mind or physical distractions around us, we thank you that for the next 40 plus minutes, we're able to dial in and lock into what you are saying to us today. Because God, it's going to be powerful. If you're speaking, it's always meaningful, it's always powerful, and it's always needed. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen, amen. amen. I hope you all received that. Well, hey, today we are talking about something that all of us are so going to be so excited for. We're talking about religious decline. Yes. Oh, yes. And we're talking about spirituality. Cool. Okay, there's a little bit more of a pop for that one. But hey, what we're talking about today is we're talking about the religious decline that we are seeing in our Western culture. Now, I could stop right there and all y'all can go, mm, you don't even have to tell me. I see it all around me. 
I see it at my work. I see it on TV. Do you know what they have going on on TV right now? Can you believe? We, we could all just go put a pin in it. We see it, right? But listen, God actually wants to encourage us this morning. We're going to talk about some real things that are happening. But he has a solution. He has his church. And he has you. And he's put you in the valley for this time to make a difference. And so tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, let's get ready to take some notes, man. Here we go. I said man. You could say or girl. There you go. All right. But hey, so what you see right now in our Western culture that there is a decline in traditional religious practices. What we see at the same time is there is a rise in spirituality. There's a rise in self-belief systems. And there is a rise in alternative communities, which is very interesting. Let me read some statistics to you. Do you guys like statistics? Cool, I love statistics. If I could just read statistics all day, I wouldn't, but I, I would enjoy it. Okay, so let's talk about this one. Decline in religious affiliation. So according to Pew Research, they got some good research. It says in the U.S., I have a tendency to hold this water for like five minutes and not drink it. I'll unburden y'all from that right now. Okay, so it says in the U.S., the percentage of adults who identify as Christian has dropped from 77% in 2009 to 63% in 2021. At the same time, the amount of people identifying as religiously unaffiliated, which are atheist, agnostic, or none, or none in particular, has grown from 17% to 29%. Church attendance has also taken a hit, but not at LifeLink Church. Come on, somebody. No, I'm just kidding. But really, <laughs> regular church attendance, I, I promised myself I wouldn't say it, and I couldn't help myself. Okay, so regular church attendance in the U.S. has been declining for decades. Gallup reported that in 2020, only 47% of Americans said that they belonged to a church, a synagogue, or a mosque, which is down from 70% in 1999. Listen, in 21 years, that's almost a 25% decrease in religious attendance. This is also affecting the younger generations, like millennials and Gen Z as well. They're significantly less religious than older generations. In fact, only 36% of millennials, which are born in 81 to 96, identify as Christians in 2021. And 40% of them describe themselves as unaffiliated. And according to Pew Research, what we're also seeing is that similar trends are starting to emerge with Gen Z as well, who were born after 1996. So we see a decline. We see people aren't coming to church. We see people are saying, hey, I'm not religious. But we see there's something interesting happening because we also see that there's a spiritual hunger of some sorts. But here's an amazing thing that's happening because sometimes we get really focused on the American church. And we, for all intents and purposes, we should because we're in America. But guess what? There is a global shift happening in our world. Listen to this. While uh, religion is declining in many Western countries, it's still growing in other parts of the world. For example, the Center for Study of Global Christianity, some of y'all are going to really get hyped about this, projects that Africa will be the largest Christian population by 2050. With the number, I mean, we got a lot of people from Africa in this house, come on. So it says this, it says that right now there are, from in 2020, there were 631 Christians. By 2050, it's projected that there will be 1.1 billion Christians in Africa. Y'all, big shifts are happening in Central America. Big shifts are happening in Iran. A million people just gave their life to Jesus. Y'all, God is moving. The church is advancing. I think a couple years ago, one of the biggest underground churches was in Afghanistan. And God is moving all around the world in massive ways. And so what I want to challenge you with, church family, is don't get defeated about what's happening at home. Don't get defeated when we look at what's happening in the Western church and say, man, the rest of the world's got something going on and we are failing. Don't get defeated. Don't get defeated. 22 to 27 percent of adults in the U.S. identify as spiritual but not religious. Now, you might be like, well, that doesn't sound good because it sounds like they're spiritual, but they don't want Jesus. But listen, here's what that means. It means people are hungry for the right thing. They're just eating at the wrong table. They're hungry for the right thing. They're just eating at the wrong table. Now, listen, it's so 
tempting. The world culture, it offers us the most amazing things. It offers us all the snacks. I love snacks. Y'all can look at me. I'm working on it. I'm working out. But I love snacks. Hot Cheetos, donut holes. If that were part of the food pyramid, it'd be at the top of my list, okay? I'm just going to be honest. We love snacks, but snacks don't fill us up. Snacks don't have long-lasting good effects for us. And so people are searching. They're finding a table. They're just not at the right table. Okay, but listen, this really speaks to something that is inside of all of us. Each and every one of us have a longing for a spiritual, a longing for a spiritual hunger in a relationship with Jesus deep down on the inside of us. Listen to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. It said, yet God has made everything beautiful for, it, for, its, own, for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So all of us have a spiritual longing for a relationship with God. God is the only one who can actually fulfill the spiritual needs that we have. One of our early church fathers, Augustine, here's how he said it. He said, our heart is restless until it rests in you. Our heart is restless until it rests in you. Listen, people are searching. People are hungry to fulfill and satisfy their spiritual needs. They are searching in places and knocking on doors, though, that will not bring fulfillment to their life. They're chasing after physical pleasure, material possession, name recognition, and all of these things still leave people feeling empty, and it's because Jesus is the only one who can fully satisfy every single spiritual need that we have. If you find yourself longing and wanting more and feeling not satisfied in your life, let me tell you today, you came here to hear that Jesus is the one who will totally, fully satisfy every spiritual need that you have. So we see a decline in religious affiliation. We see a decline in church attendance. And for us in here, we have to ask ourselves, is this really that big of a deal? Is this that big of a deal? I mean, we're here We're good. So is this really a big deal? The answer, absolutely it's a big deal. Because God does not want culture to die and burn while the church is hiding in its four walls and we're good. That's not what he wants. He wants us to make an impact and change our culture. So we need to know why church is so important. We need to know why having a relationship with Jesus is so important. I'm literally preaching to the choir who was literally right here a moment ago, but I can look at y'all. Some of y'all are like, I already know, man. All right, but listen to this. We need Jesus, but we also need his church. Listen to this. In John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. But from apart from me, you can do nothing. So listen, we need Jesus in our life. We need to live connected to him because when we do, the fruit of our life, mm, it's gonna be so tasty and good. It's gonna, apart from him though, we can't do anything. We will not experience the fullness of life and all of what God wants for his church and for Christ's followers if we don't have Jesus. And listen, one thing Jesus calls us to do and has given us as a gift is the church. Jesus established his church to be a blessing for his people. Listen to this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 12. It says, now these are the gifts Christ gave the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church the body of Christ. The church is a blessing to your life. I don't know if you've ever realized that before, but as a Christ follower, the church is a blessing to your life. It is a net positive to your spiritual journey. I encourage you to write this down. The church is a place where we gather, worship, serve, and get equipped. Man, we really like those first two, don't we? Man, I could come here. I could not be serving on a day. They sung one of my favorite worship songs, say nothing else. I'm like, keep going, Pastor Lacey. 
I gather, I say high five to all my people. I look at Tans in his amazing suit, and I'm just like, yeah, we're starting a profile today, man. And then I could, I could be, be like, whew, I feel good. Now it's time to go. But we are called to gather together. We are called to worship together. We're called to serve together. And we're called to get equipped. This is essential to the life of a Christ follower that we gather together. Listen to this in Hebrews 10, 25. Very familiar scripture. But it says, and let us not neglect other translations say, don't forsake our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of the Lord, of the day of his return is near. Listen, church is not an option. Church is not a two, four Sunday option. Church is not a one, three, five option. Church is not if I feel like it and I can get there and it's not raining and the right person's preaching and I like the sermon. And it's not an option for our life. It's just not. It is essential to the life of a believer. It is essential for someone who says, I have chosen to give my life to Jesus and to follow him, if we've said that, church is essential to our life. Because when we are here and we gather and we worship and we serve and we get equipped, guess what? We are going to receive something from God. But we are also here to give something to God, to give our worship to him. We are here to be an encouragement to one another. God, listen, there are people who are walking through literal hell on this earth right now, financially, physically, that are part of this church, and we are called to gather together to encourage one another, to lift each other up. I'm telling you right now, when we come together and we worship God and we encourage each other, it changes something on the inside of a person. There have been many times at my lowest points when it's been an encouragement from someone in this place that has helped bring me up from out of the ashes, that has helped bring me up from my brokenness. And you might be like, I thought Jesus was supposed to do that. He does, and he gives the church to his people as a benefit to come alongside each other, to lift each other up, to encourage each other, to serve together, to get equipped together, so that we can be built up here, filled up here, and go make a difference in our world. Jesus plus his church is essential to our life. Jesus plus his search, my favorite math equation of all time, is essential to our life. So why in the world is there such a religious decline in our country, in the Western church? I could go off here, y'all, but I won't. Listen to some of these statistics. Here's why people say, here's what people say about why they don't attend church. They feel like organized religion doesn't meet their spiritual needs. They feel like they don't need the church to live a life of morality. The church's teachings are incompatible with modern views on social issues like LGBTQ+. Plus and gender equality. They feel like the church is outdated. They let work demands, competing weekend activities, and an increased pace of life stop them from consistently getting into church. Some people say that the church is hypocritical and judgmental. Sounds like a judgment to me. But according to Barna Group study, one of the top reasons people lead the church is the perception of hypocrisy among Christians. In fact, listen to this. In 2019, 87% of non-religious millennials said they view Christians as judgmental. And 85% of them said that they were hypocritical. See, when we look at what's happening in the news headlines, in the articles, we see church leaders fall. We see church scandals. And guess who else sees that? the rest of our culture, and the rest of our world. Here's what's so frustrating about that, because for every single scandal, for every single fallen leader, there are a thousand pastors and a thousand churches doing incredible work in their communities. But, listen, culture sees the headlines. Culture sees what's being projected. 
and they are now imprinted and say, that is what church looks like. That is what a pastor looks like. That is what a church family looks like. And I don't want it. We got to change the cultural perception of church. And they say that church is irrelevant. It says that 66% of Americans believe churches are, churches are losing their relevance in the modern world. Many churches struggle to adapt to change cultural landscapes. They're failing to engage younger audiences and address contemporary issues in ways that are reasonable. They say that the traditional models of worship and teaching and community involvement can feel out of step with modern life. Because let me tell you something, when Gen, with Gen Z, where the majority of them get their spiritual input and in, in spiritual influence and are shaped spiritually is on TikTok, is on Reels, is on social medias, and it's on podcasts. It sounds so ridiculous to us, but these TikTok theologians are getting millions of views speaking straight trash to your generation, to the next generation. And so listen, our next generation is getting shaped and equipped by people online who do not have Jesus at the center of their life. They are getting shaped and molded and created in the image of what reels and TikToks are saying about who God really is, about who Jesus really is. And it doesn't have anything to do with what this Bible says. So I encourage you, get your kids off TikTok, and I encourage you <laughs> to be, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, I love y'all so, <laughs> no, but listen, it's important that your voice as a parent is loud in your student's life. It's important that they are getting shaped and molded in the word of God, not just what someone else's opinion about the word of God is. And so I encourage you parents, this is in my notes, have all their passwords, ask them what they're watching, look at what they're watching, start following people who are getting the most views, start watching their reels. It, listen, it will offend you to the deepest core of who you are as a Christ follower, but you need to know what is being presented to this generation, okay? So you can know how to combat what's being said. You might be like, I don't know how to combat that. We'll talk about that in a second, okay? So what are they looking, what are people looking for when it comes to spiritual fulfillment? Student movement, y'all still with me? We still friends? Cool. <laughs> we have good conversations about this stuff. But what are they looking for when it comes to spiritual fulfillment? I'm going to just highlight a couple of these things. Um, some of the um, popular ones I want to highlight. The first one is New Age Spirituality. What is New Age Spirituality? Well, there's been an uptick in astrology, in energy healing, in crystal healing, in tarot card readings. These spiritual practices emphasize personal growth and healing and connection to the universe. Yoga and meditation. Okay, hold on. I'm not coming for all of us who like our Friday morning EOS class, okay? But just listen, okay? Just, all right. So yoga, meditation, these are based in Hinduism and Buddhism. So this spiritual practice seeks to harmonize the body, mind, and spirit. Hmm. I feel like that sounds familiar. The goal is to escape from the cycle of reincarnation, to reach nirvana, which is a state of mind where a person experiences complete lasting peace, contentment, and freedom from suffering. I could tell you about a man who will do all those things for you. There's also paganism in Wicca. This spiritual practice focuses on natural-based spirituality, rituals, and the respect of a variety of deities or forces of nature. The amazing thing is God has actually delivered a lot of our church family from some of these things. I know you don't know everyone's story, but people have come to LifeLink Church and said, I was doing this for years of my life, and I felt like there's got to be something real and different, and then they found Jesus at LifeLink. So praise God for that. But listen, what I do want to say is every single one of these spiritual practices, whether I named them or didn't name them, and you probably have a litany of them running through your mind right now, every single one of these practices that excludes Jesus and his scripture as the foundation for life is an imitation of the real thing and will never fully fulfill any spiritual need. 
People need to know that spiritual fulfillment is not found in their edibles. It's not found in individualism. It's not found in sexual expression. It's not found in good vibes and energy. It's only found in Jesus. It's only found in Jesus. Look, when we choose to put our faith in Jesus Christ, when we choose to follow him, listen to what happens. Our spiritual, our spiritual needs are totally fulfilled. We are in right standing with the Father. We receive peace. We receive rest. We receive grace. We receive freedom. Every single thing that our spirit longs for, that our spirit is reaching for, that our, that our, our physical self is trying to figure out how can I just fill in this hole that I feel, when we have Jesus as the foundation and his relationship with him and his word is the foundation of our life, every single spiritual need will be fulfilled. So what can we do as a church to address the religious decline? What can we do as a church family, as the capital C church? Well, first thing we got to do, and if I could be so unbelievably biased, I think we're doing a pretty good job here at LifeLink. Always room for growth, but it's easy to grow when you're doing a good job. Okay, I'm just, I'm just being funny. Okay, so what can we do as a church to address these, this religious decline? The first thing we have to do is we have to emphasize personal relationship with Jesus. We have to emphasize the importance of a personal relationship with Jesus. People need to know that they need Jesus to experience all that God has for them. They need to know that it's Jesus. It's not a flashy church service. And y'all, we put on some good church services. It's not just an invite card and go, I hope, that the, I hope God changes their life through that square piece of paper. Thank you, Lord, my hands are up, I'm all done. Nope, it's we gotta emphasize that there's a personal relationship with Jesus that each individual needs to have. Listen to John 14, six. It says, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way, y'all. Jesus is the only way. We need Jesus in our life. But listen, what do we need to do next? We need to actually follow Jesus. Him. We need to not just know him, but we need to follow him as well. Listen to this in Matthew 16, 24. Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. We got to give up our way. It's not about us. It's about him. So if he says it, we do it. If he says, hey, here's how I want you to live your life. We don't go, that's a nice option. But I think I'll take the relationship and still take my own way. So I don't, we can't do that. We give, we give up our own way. We lay down our own way. We pick up what he's saying and we follow him. We got to go his way. So we need to help people find and we need to help people follow Jesus. Second thing we need to do is we need to focus on authentic community. We need to focus on authentic community. Let me show you how we do this at LifeLink Church. We do that on Sunday morning. We do that on Sunday morning. You're doing it right now. Good job, everyone. We are worshiping as a community. That's so essential. Did we talk about that? That's essential, right? We got to come. We got to gather. We got to worship. But we also serve in community. How we do that here at LifeLink is we do that on the dream team. So we do it on Sunday morning, and part of that is on the dream team. Come on, shout out to all my dream teamers in the house. Woo, that was like the whole church. Okay, let's go. But we serve in community. It's so important that we serve. Maybe you haven't found your place to serve. That's okay. Maybe you're just like, serve? I didn't even know I can do that. Let me tell you something. Find your place to serve and watch yourself go up a level in your relationship with God. The level of fulfillment. Listen, I'm speaking from personal experience and probably the personal experience of hundreds of people in this house. Listen, when you start serving, and I started serving when I was 15 years old, the level of fulfillment you receive takes you up a whole nother level in your relationship with God. It's really, really incredible. I'm gonna t I'll tell you in a little bit how you can get on the dream team here in a second. But another way that we focus on authentic community is in life groups. It's in life groups. So we don't just come and worship together. We don't serve together and then say, see you next week. We actually live in community with each other. Shout out to anyone who's in a life group right now. Let me hear you make some noise. 
There we go. There we go. I love it. It's so important that we live in community because of what we were just talking about a second ago. We don't want to just be encouraged on Sunday. We don't just want to be encouraged and feel like people got our back and we feel good on one day of the week. We actually want to extend that and, and say, no, no, it's not just my Sunday family. This is my family on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We do life together. And so there are so many examples of people in here who have had the touch of a life group impact their life, lift up a need that they have, and that's what the church is all about. It's not just what we do here, it's what we do out there as well with each other. And so, man, it is so important. We worship together on a Sunday, we serve together on a Sunday, and we live in community as well. We got to grow together, we got to encourage each other and serve together. It's going to build the church when we do. The third thing here of what the church can do is empower and equip the church. I hope you feel equipped today and empowered. But here's how we do that at LifeLink. Listen, again, Sunday morning service. Y'all look at me. This is where discipleship starts. This is where discipleship starts. For each and every one of us who call LifeLink home, this is where discipleship starts. When Pastor Dave is up here, when Pastor Shree's up here, they are discipling you for your week. They are giving you the starting point. It's the firing gun at the beginning of a race where they say, okay, here we go. Y'all feel good about the plan? Psh, go, right? That's what Sunday morning is about for you in this house. It's so important. Don't just go and serve and then catch it on YouTube later. Don't just say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be here when I can. This is where discipleship starts. This is where the shaping begins. I encourage you, get in this place as much as you can and bring your family too. It's going to be good. The second way we get empowered and equipped is growth track. Remember I was talking about the dream team a second ago? Maybe you are in a place where you're like, I wish I knew what my next step was here at Lifelink. I wish I actually could do something or, or give something to the church like we were talking about earlier. This is where you can hear the vision of our house. This is where you can actually get equipped and discover what your spiritual gifts that God has given you are. And this is a place where you can get empowered and equipped to be on the dream team, which if you don't know what the dream team is, it's the fabric of who LifeLink Church is. It's the fabric of the people who serve the house every, sing every single Sunday morning. And we want you to experience what that's like. Maybe you're here and you're just like, man, I'm just here for the first time. Don't put all that pressure on me. Cool. Come for three more weeks and then go to Grove Track in the beginning of November. <laughs> Hear the vision of the house and see how you can be a part of the church. Not just attend the church, but be a part of the church. Do you see the difference? That's how you can grow in community. Another way is in basics. We have our basics class that teaches us disciplines of our Christian faith. It teaches us the parts of our Christian faith that we need to understand, like prayer and uh, lots of other different things. But listen, if you are wondering, what are, some, are, what are some of the building blocks? What are some of the pillars of our faith? Basics is your next step. What I love about this class so much is it doesn't just teach you what those basic disciplines are. It teaches you how to teach other people. Isn't that incredible? Because we don't just want to know the information. We want to actually know how to teach and empower other people with the information as well. And then uh, finally on this, we got life groups and equip classes. We talked about life groups already before, but listen, equip classes. This is where you can become equipped and empowered and learn how you can go into your world and live in this culture in a godly way. This is where you can become equipped with some basic life skills that you will need to set up your future for amazing things. I'm thinking about Financial Peace University. I'm thinking of our marriage classes. Come on, there's a lot of people who are married, but guess what? All of us have finances. Maybe some of you are like, not as much as I like. And guess what? You gotta go to Financial Peace <laughs> to, to discover how you can properly and scripturally handle the funds that God has given you. I'm telling you, these equip classes will empower you to be an incredible and, and make an incredible impact in your community. And the fourth thing here, y'all better get fired up for this one. We got to pray for revival. Ooh, there was a little bit of a delay because someone was like, oh no, is he talking about me? Guess what? I am. We got to pray for revival. Listen, Jesus says that his church will be called a house of prayer. So we got to pray 
like he's called the church to do. Listen to this. He, G, uh, James 5, 16 says this, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. What's a righteous person? It's someone who is in right standing with God. It's someone who has had their right, life redeemed by God. It's someone who has a relationship and is empowered by Jesus. Those people, when they pray, it's powerful and effective. Church, we have to pray for revival. We can do anything in this place. We can stay and we can serve and we can worship together. But if we're not praying, we are missing a component of what God wants us to do. We have to pray for revival. Listen, a church that is not praying for lost people to get saved and find Jesus is like a kid at a birthday party shadow punching a pinata and expecting candy to fall out. It ain't gonna happen. We have to be the type of people at church, Christ followers who say, I am going to stand in the gap for my neighbor who isn't here yet, for my loved one who isn't here yet, for my mom who is lost, for my son, for my daughter, and I'm gonna pray that God would bring revival to their life. I'm gonna pray that God would move in power in my co-workers life we got to pray for revival prayer is effective and prayer is powerful when the church prays so that's what we can do collectively as a church some of y'all like please don't keep going but this is what we can do collectively as a church but here's the challenge what has God called us to do as individual Christ followers in our community what has Jesus called us to do as individuals in our neighborhood. I wanna talk about that. I say neighborhood, that could be at your job, could be at your school, wherever you're at. What has Jesus called you to do as an individual who says, all right, I got my name badge on, it says I follow Jesus, how do you want me to live my life? First way, how we can start addressing the decline that we are seeing is I have to choose to implement God's scripture in my life. I have to choose to implement God's scripture in my life. Listen, our faith is not compartmentalized. Our faith is not a Sunday faith. It's not a Wednesday night faith. It's not a life group faith. It touches every part of our life, like a whole bunch of spaghetti in a bowl. It's, it's intersecting everywhere. That's what our faith needs to look like. It doesn't just, I don't just pick up some verses that help carry me through when I'm feeling sad. It literally impacts my entire being as a person, if I'm a Christ follower. Here's what James 1.22 says. It says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise you are only fooling yourselves. So it's important that we read God's word. It's important that we listen to God's word, but it's important that we actually do what it says. We gotta implement it in our life because then what's gonna happen is God's gonna start to change us on the inside. Look at what Romans 12, two says. It says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Listen, God changes the way I think when I read his word. He changes my mind from a selfish, self-focused mindset to a kingdom mindset. Now I can learn to know who God is, know what his plan is for my life, know what his will is for me as a believer, and now I can go and actually make a difference in the world around me. Now I can actually make a kingdom impact to a culture who is broken and lost. Do you see it? It starts with the word, implementing the word in our life. The second thing, I feel challenged with is this. I have to be active in my community. I gotta be active in my community. Man, for much of my life, I'm gonna be honest, I said someone else can do that. People are already doing that. I'll just help them with what they need. But God's not just called me to be a partner, he's called me to actually be a minister in the gospel of reconciliation, which means that he's called me to go and have individual conversations and make an impact in people's lives. Not just here on a Sunday, but in my neighborhood too. Listen to this, it says, Jesus tells his followers something really powerful in Matthew 22, 37 through 39. He says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the secondly is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. So we gotta love God with everything we have. 
But what does loving our neighbor as ourself mean? It means that we actually have to show interest and we actually have to care about people in our life. That's, it's easy to do when you love them already. It's hard to do when they drive you nuts. It's hard to do when you see their lifestyle and you disapprove of that lifestyle. But he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Show an interest and show a care for them. So how can we be active in our community? Well, first of all, we gotta be available, we gotta be accessible, and we gotta be spiritual. We gotta be available, we gotta be accessible, and we gotta be spiritual. Let me break this down for you, available. The amazing thing is we have first Saturdays here, every first Saturday, and some of y'all are part of every single one of these, shout out to y'all. But every first Saturday, we do something at LifeLink that, that is a benefit to the community in the city that's in our footprint. But my, I feel challenged by God telling me this week and by encouraging us, but what are you doing to take care of the individual needs in your neighborhood? The church is gonna do it on Saturday in a big macro way. What are you gonna do as an individual in the neighborhood that you're a part of? I don't care if it's an apartment complex. I don't care if it's a dorm room. I don't care if it's, uh, you're living with a whole bunch of people and you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm on a twin bed, I'm on a bunk bed and this is the, not the season I was hoping for. Doesn't matter if you live in a gated community, doesn't matter if you live in a, 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 a traditional community, a classic community, whatever you wanna say, on a cul-de-sac, on a tiny little road, God's saying, what are you doing to impact the needs of your community? Listen, we gotta be available. We gotta be available. Maybe you ask yourself, do I even have time? Do I have time to be available? Listen, as a Christ follower, we gotta make time. We gotta make time. Listen, Netflix will always be there. YouTube TV will always be there. The Cardinals are trash this year. The Diamondbacks are out. Come on, y'all. You can only watch Friends so many more times. Okay? All the fingers are pointing to myself, by the way. We gotta make time. We gotta make time. Be available. Oh, okay, I gotta, I'm getting ahead of myself. Here's the other thing too. We gotta be accessible. We gotta be accessible. Is that the same thing? Listen, we gotta be accessible. Ask yourself this. Are you the type of neighbor that pulls into your garage and lets the garage go all the way down before you get out of your car? Y'all, come on. Can we be real? Is that not real? We all have those neighbors who are like, I cannot talk about trees and plants right now. I just go, I gotta shut this garage. I just gotta go in. I gotta make dinner. I gotta bathe my kids. Like, but listen, our neighbors should know our name. Our neighbors should know our faces. Our, neighbor, our neighbors should know our smile. Everyone smile at me real quick. Let's practice, smile. Oh my God, look at these. Your neighbors are so lucky. Your neighbors are so lucky. But listen, our neighbors need to know who we are and we need to be accessible to them. They should know that, hey, if there's something going on, if I have a need, if I need prayer, I need to go to the Lehas house. I need to go and connect with Ryland. I need to go and connect with Vimba. I need to go to Jaja's house because she's the only one who can actually help me and has shown me that she wants to help me. That's how available and accessible we need to be for our neighbors. So what are those needs? Maybe you're just like, man, I feel challenged. Okay, what can I do as an individual? Maybe you wanna rent a bounce house for all the neighborhood kids and grill up some hot dogs. If you got the ability, if you got the capacity, if you got the time, if you got the finances, y'all fund that thing, do that thing and watch what a positive impact it will make on the neighborhood. I'm telling you, be available and be accessible. Pastor Shree already gave us a freebie for this month. You're like, I don't know how to do it. She's like, here's how you do it. Take this bag out of my hand. And we go, okay, sounds good. But listen, light the night. Imagine what God can do through LifeLink Church to the neighborhoods all around Queen Creek and Gilbert and Chandler and Mesa on ASU campuses, at your high schools. Come on, imagine what he can do through this. Got to be available. We got to be accessible. And I got to be quicker right now. All right. So next thing, we got to be spiritual. We got to be spiritual. What do I mean by that? You should be running up to your neighbor and screaming at tongues in them until they fall over. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. But listen, you got to be spiritual. What do I mean by that? You should have a list of your neighbors. I, okay, pardon me. I keep saying you, but hear my heart. 
this is a challenge that God has been given me. We should have a list of our neighbors and we should be praying for them by name a couple times a week. You know, a fun way to do that, go on prayer walks in your neighborhood. Come on, we all wanna be healthy. We all wanna get our steps in. Why don't we add some spiritual context to that as well? Walk around your neighborhood, pray for the homes. My wife and I, before we got our home, I don't have time to tell you about the amazing miracle home that we're in, but in 2021, we bought a home and we shouldn't have bought a home and God blessed it and did an amazing thing. Before we even walked in that house, saw what it looked like on the inside, before we even had our realtor connect us in a, in a way to the people, guys, we said, that's our home, that's what we want. And we started to pull up our car and we got our kids out and we put Jude in his stroller and he's one and a half years old and Rox is on her scooter and we're walking around a neighborhood that isn't even ours. And we're praying that God would do miracles in our neighbor's lives. We were praying that God would allow us to have influence and to know our neighbors. And let me tell you something, God did a miracle in 2021 and this is something we still implement today. We, we try to do our very best to be available and accessible. And I'm calling myself out because I know I'm not always the most accessible person. But when I see my neighbor out there, I need to walk out there and pretend I'm watering plants just to make, oh, oh my gosh, hi, how are you doing? You know, whatever we got to do to be available and be accessible so we have a chance to be spiritual. Because let me tell you something, God wants to move in power, not just here at the church, but in your life in conversations, in moments where you're connecting with the neighbor and you're having the opportunity to hear their heart, hear what's going on and say, hey, can I pray for you? It doesn't hurt to ask a neighbor, can I pray for you? But listen, we gotta be available and we gotta be accessible in order for God to be able to present the opportunity for us to be spiritual in those moments. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna see your neighborhood start to change. You're gonna see the spiritual climate of your neighborhood start to increase because you're taking the mantle and you're saying, if it's just me by myself, I'm walking around this neighborhood, I'm praying for it. If it's just me by myself, God send me, because I want you to do miracles in this place. I want you to do miracles on these streets. I want you to do miracles in the lives of these husbands and these mothers and these children that you've called me to be a part of. So I encourage you, God be available in our communities. So if we wanna see some big changes happen, we got to make sure we implement God's word in our life. We've got to make sure that we are active in our community. And finally, I want to encourage you with this. Encourage you to write this down. My life needs to show people that God's way is better. My life needs to show people that God's way is better. When someone observes our life, what they should say is they should say, being a Christ follower, that's way better than the way I'm living my life. Could you imagine that? If someone just looked at your life, how you were living, how you were blessed, how God was moving in you, and they saw such a clear distinction that they say, whatever you're doing is better than the way I'm living my life. My life needs to show people that God's way is better. Listen, people are searching for the spiritual. They're searching for the spiritual. Our life needs to look different. Look at what Jesus said in John 10, 10. He said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Christ followers, our life is not supposed to look like everyone else's life. We're supposed to be living an abundant life. What does that mean? Does that mean that we're supposed to have an easy and a comfortable life that's free of hardship? Nope. But what it does mean is we live a life that is full of God's goodness. We live a life that has been redeemed and saved eternally. We live a life fully content and fully satisfied because Jesus has taken care of every physical and spiritual need that we have. That's what living an abundant life looks like. Listen to this, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Look at me real quick. The fruit of our life needs to look different from the rest of the world. The fruit of our life, what comes out of our mouth, what comes out of our life, what's been being produced out of our life, it needs to be such a difference to where people hold their fruit and go, I don't like this fruit. What kind of fruit is coming from over here? That looks good. What tree 
did you get that from? It need, I know I'm using tree and fruit metaphors, but listen, the, what, what our life, the fruit of our life needs to look so different from the rest of the world that people look and they just go, oh my gosh, what are you doing with your life? And we get the opportunity to say, listen, I follow Jesus. I'm a Christ follower. Let me tell you about who Jesus is and what he's done in my life. And they get to say, well, whatever you're doing, being a Christ follower is clearly better than the way I'm living my life. See, if we're not reflecting an abundant life and the fruit of our life looks just like the rest of the world around us, then why would someone want Jesus? Why would someone think that God's way is better? Let me answer that for you. They wouldn't. If we're looking like the rest of the world, if we're grumbling and, and doing everything else that the world around us is doing, getting caught up in all the conversations that don't matter, listen, people are just going to go, oh, yeah, 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 that's like this, this, and this. Now, listen, am I saying that we can't have bad days? Am I saying we can't struggle? Absolutely not. We're going to struggle. We're going to mess up. But the overwhelming fruit of our life needs to look like the abundant life needs to look like the fruit of the Spirit consistently coming out of us. That's what's going to change the world. Listen to this in Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You guys are being so gracious today, but listen to this. It says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, Here's a challenge. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. Man, I feel the Lord challenging me this week. I feel that he's extending the challenge to us as a church family. Let's not just be a light in this church. It is so easy to flip the switch when we come into this place, when we worship, when we gather, when we serve. It's so easy to say our Christianese that we say to each other all the time. But listen, let's be a light to the world around us. Let's be a light to the world around us, our neighborhoods, our schools. Let's be a light to the world around us. We gotta move past the thinking that I can just occasionally throw an invite card in the crack of my neighbor's door and just run away and hope it all works out. We gotta move past it. Now, please do that. But we gotta move past the thinking to say, oh, I'll, just, I'll, pray, I'll pray for you this week. Oh my God, please don't let them see my face, right? We gotta move past that and we gotta say, okay, how can I have my life be a walking testimony? How can I have my life reflect who Jesus is? How can I make sure the conduct and the fruit of my life points people to God, points people to God in such a way where they say, man, God's way is better. Jesus is better. That's who I want and that's who I need. Let me pray for you today. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for who you are and what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for this challenge. Lord, there is a decline that has happened, but we thank you in Jesus' name that the church in America, the church in the West is strong, that you would empower us, that you would equip us, that you would lift us and let us be a light to the world around us. Let us live with such amazing conduct not from a seat of judgment, not from a seat of, 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 of moral hierarchy where we look down at the rest of the world, but as an invitation to say this way of life is better. God's way is better. Let your churches around the valley, let your churches all across the states, let your churches in Canada and Mexico, everywhere that the Western church seems to be declining, Lord. We ask in the name of Jesus, that your church would be strong again. We ask in the name of Jesus that Christ's followers would take up the word of God and say, this is the foundation for my life. This is how I live my life. That we would give up our own way, that we would reject culture's way of doing things. And we say, God's way 
is better. Empower your people. Let us be strong for the nation. Help us be a light. In the name of Jesus, we pray. There may be people in here today you're recognizing. We have mentioned Jesus a lot. And when you look at your life and you see where your spiritual life is, you may see that Jesus is not anywhere close to the equation. And you may realize today that Jesus is the missing piece. Jesus is your answer. Jesus is the one you need to pursue. Jesus is the one you need to follow. And you might feel challenged to say, I need that relationship with him like we were talking about earlier. Because I have needs, I have been spiritually longing, trying to find the answer, and I haven't found it. But today I'm here to tell you, the answer is in Jesus. And if you need to make a decision to say, I want to follow Jesus. I want to give up doing things my own way. I want to give up doing things like the world around me or my culture has told me to. And I just want Jesus. And I just need Jesus. And I want to start with Jesus. I want to pray for you right now. Church family, let's pray this together as a community of believers in support for people who are making a real-time decision to say, I need Jesus today. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me the truth of your word. Thank you for sending your son Jesus into this world to pay the penalty of my sin. I recognize today that I have gone my own way. I lived life on my own. But Jesus, today, I'm giving up my own way and I'm turning to you. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I put my trust in you. And I'm choosing from this day forward to follow after you. Holy Spirit, come fill me up. Give me the power I need to live for you and to follow the word of God. Help me be a light, help me grow and help me change. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. If you made that decision to start a relationship with Jesus today, congratulations. We would love to connect with you so that this first step won't be your last step. Click the next step link in the description below. Our team would love to connect with you, pray with you, and put tools in your hand to help you make the most of your decision today. For those of you that worship with us regularly and are looking for a way to worship God through giving, click the giving link in the description below or download the Secure Give app. Thank you so much for watching today. We'd love to see you in person Sundays at 9 or 11 at our Gilbert campus. Have a great week and we'll see you next Sunday.